Hey guys, welcome back to uh, my channel. As you can see, I've got a special guest. For those of you who may not know, this is my mom. This is my mom. Uh, you'll introduce yourself. You can introduce yourself now. You can tell them who you are. Uh, my name is Makwena Mazui. And a mother of three. And a grandmother of one. <laughs> she's also a friend, she's a sister, she is also for others a mentor and a counsellor and um, I'm happy to have her on this wife talks and because it's locked down uh, she's the best, the next best wife yeah, that I can, that I could grab and I think it's very cool that she gets to be on this one as well. How long have you married with Dad Konji? 30 what years? Two. 32? Uh-uh, 38. Eight, yeah. Mm -hmm. Heavyweights, heavyweights, 38 years in the game. <laughs> so I think that the wisdom that she's going to spill is going to be something that uh, will definitely help because if I had my way regarding this topic, it would be another story. But anyway, we're gonna get into it right now. Please make sure that you subscribe and um, don't forget to comment below and engage in the comment section. And we're gonna get started. Um, cheating or infidelity where do you draw the line especially when you're in a relationship and we're going to touch it both with singles and married people so you won't be left out so i hope that you guys enjoy but my, my mom is being shy and she's not a shy person i don't know why i'm being shy but anyway so how this came about i actually had this elf in my heart for a while just thinking about the topic of cheating and infidelity but not necessarily in a negative way, but what also sparked it is that I saw a video, you guys may or may not have seen it because this particular couple does YouTube now. At least now that it was locked down, they started their, their YouTube channel. I Personally, I didn't watch it. I just saw a clip that was trending where they said, um, cheating, I will never, I will never, they said, I will never leave you even if you cheat a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not worth me leaving you for because our relationship is much deeper than that. Mm. But I was like, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. I feel like then there's just being games played. And then I also saw someone else saying, some of you are on your fifth second chance because you keep giving people my second chance, my second chance, my second chance. So we'll take it from dating and then my mom will also take it from a marriage perspective as to how far is too far when it comes to that. So yeah, mm. um, when it comes to cheating, especially when you're dating, where, where do you, yeah, do you tolerate it or not? Um, with dating, I Yeah, think. with dating, do you, is it something you date, tolerate? When you not something that you can tolerate. Or when you're in a really, yeah, let's say relationship, because people have their own yeah. ideas. When you're in a relationship with someone before you get married, is, it, is cheating something you tolerate or not? Those are the signs of the type of marriage you're going to have. Mm back and forth, back and forth. I think it's an opportunity for you to walk away if a person has constantly mm. showed such signs. If they are not honest, you need to walk away as soon as possible because we have this tendency of, ah, shame man, he was so sorry, I saw tears and all that. There are tears, there are um, water flowing from your eyes mm. and there are real tears where a person says I am really really sorry I made a mistake or I was stupid to allow this person to come too close uh, to my space because sometimes it's not only the guys who will do that it's us as ladies who would push ourselves towards mm. a, a person mm. you know mm. because guys sometimes they they, um, they are not wise like us you know there are times where you will see that ooh, this woman is really trying to make some moves mm. and guys don't see that mm. because also that they are disadvantage is that they want to be appreciated mm. you know they want to be loved they want to be acknowledged and all those things um their egos need to be strong mm -hmm. the problem is then they fail to see even if there is danger mm. You know, sometimes it wouldn't be him. He wouldn't have uh, said anything. But for the fact that he cannot say no, 
or stop or whatever, mm. then it becomes a problem. You know, when you realize that, when the guy says, honestly, I've never said anything to this person, when he's coming clean, then you can forgive. But when he's also hiding things, you will see. Mm. And it's best to walk away. <laughs> so now, so if that's dating, then what about marriage? So now, finally married, from what I heard, and you know, when people would add their two cents, apparently when it comes to cheating, you don't leave as easily as you would when you're dating. How, how far is too far? Someone makes a mistake once, twice, fine, forgive, but what about that, that boundary? You know, where, where's that line of saying, you know, now, now you did it, you overdid it? Yeah, it's very difficult, you can't say, uh, this is enough and everybody who's had that experience must run away. It's very difficult. One, you need to, I think what comes in is who you are as a Christian, or, or, or what you are and where you are as a Christian. Okay. okay? I don't want to bring the Christianity for now, um, but as an individual, as a woman, what is it that I want? Mm. I would love not to share my husband with anybody. 100%. One. <laughs> Two, because I need to be respected. Mm -hmm. I think that is why, for me personally, it is important that I communicate with my husband um, from the morning, during the day, and in the afternoon. Mm. Okay? Because that brings us closer. And it's even worse when we had a tiff. Mm. Mm. Okay? And then I go to the office somebody passes a remark, oh, you're looking nice, bully. Mm. And you know that you are not appreciated at home. Mm. You would want to hear the same thing even tomorrow. Mm. That somebody else is saying, oh, bully, you're looking nice. Did your husband tell you? And you'll find that he doesn't even tell you or recognize you if mm. you have a new hairstyle or mm. a new dress or whatever. Mm. So you will tend to um, have you know, move your head towards the individual who's giving you praises and acknowledging your presence. Mm -hmm. So it's important for you as a couple to, to try and talk things over. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes in a marriage, there are things that drive our partners away. Mm -hmm. When you have had an issue uh, tonight, like one day, like this evening, and then you decide that I'm not going to talk to him. Mm. He walks in, you're not talking to him at night, you don't talk, you don't touch. And someone else is interested mm. in this guy. He, women, whether you are happy or not, male and female, they make moves, even if you can have a ring <laughs> filling your whole finger, they will make a move. Mm, okay, that's true. and it doesn't mean anything mm. to them. It doesn't mean anything, mm. you know, because they want to express whatever. So it happens sometimes that people or things creep in in your marriage mm. when that situation has occurred. Mm. Mm. You know, I don't think there is a husband or a, a, a woman, a wife, who will be who's happy who's just got married yesterday and he has never cheated before, who will just adopt that. But there are things that creep in into your marriage because you uh, assume mm. it will never happen, mm. number one, and you take another person for granted. Mm. Um, and those things that creep in, it's not something that a person has planned, mm. but they creep in because of other things that has happened. The door has been opened. Mm. So I think it is important for, for, for us, number one, um, that's why I'm saying you cannot draw a line and say, this is enough. Because there are other things that make women to stay, even if they've seen that my husband is not faithful to me. So you cannot say um, enough is enough. It can be the enough is enough for you, but for me, 20 times, it, it, I would still give him an opportunity. You're smiling. <laughs> I'm trying to find out in those instances where someone is constantly breaking their promise, how, what, how do you deal with that situation? 
That's a habit, Bully. That's a habit. But when you're mad, that how person, do you deal with it? Because people like to say begezela, but in in some cases, it's also not fair. Because you can't begezela while someone continuously misbehaves. It's like they're misbehaving, knowing that ah, I still have a machanza tenla. I would tell you straight away that that person was doing it before you got married, mm. and you turned a blind eye because you cannot. Um, just discuss with somebody who you know when you're dating, you want to see someone every day, mm. and all of a sudden, if they are not pitching or they are not answering your phone, and they only has always have stories of not being able to be contactable, mm. then there is a problem. But you have either ignored the signs of a person who is a constant liar mm. in in general, okay. And it's unfair for us as women, especially us uh, senior women, to tell you young ones to beg a zella for something that we do not know where it started and how um, long has it been happening. Mm. As if it is the first time this particular individual does whatever. Mm. But when a person has been um, stupidly so, he he fell into something deeper than, like a trap, mm. because it mm. does happen, mm. like a trap, mm. okay? There you can forgive, but before you forgive, mm. you need to know what you're forgiving. Mm. You need to know what you're forgiving. That's why I, did, I said, I do not want, um, you know, from the onset to bring the Bible mm. um, as the yardstick. Mm of us keeping our marriages because that's where we, we hide um, around or behind the Bible mm -hmm. and say, especially to women, but the Bible says forgive 70 times 7. It is impossible. And I, I don't think it would be fair or it is fair for us to pull that stand. Mm -hmm. It's not fair. There's a point where um, I would say if he wants to go there, let him be there. I need to protect myself. I need to protect my kids. And number one, my family. Mm. If he decides to go there, he must just go there. Mm. You know, because then he was not ready to be a husband. Mm. He was not ready to be a husband. He wanted to continue to live a married but single and life. life at the same and, time. You know, mm. as much as God says, um, he, he dislikes divorce, mm. but the, there is a point where you as an individual, not your mother-in-law coming in, your father-in-law, your family having a meeting to tell you what needs to be done. Mm. Not them, because they are not in this thing. Mm. You and your heart and this person who does this, because it's not only guys who who cheat, we do it as well, mm. you know? So, um, for whatever reasons, people say he doesn't provide for my family, he doesn't do this, he doesn't do that, and then therefore it gives you reason to go out, no, mm. it doesn't. So, there is no point where one can say, this is the point of no return. It's a personal thing. It's a personal thing. So if someone has been in that situation, we already discussed dating and what you can do from there. But if someone is married and they're like, yo, I will you. Jalo, It's the same story all the time. What would your advice be in that situation to say, yeah, look, he's been doing this over and over and again. And also, is it different when it's just like me and Kevin, when it's the two of us? Before kids, uh, before kids and after kids, is there a difference? Because sometimes you can say before kids, I know this is too much because a person could be doing it a lot now, and I could choose to say, I right, let's just take a break. Versus when there's kids, do you end up staying for the kids, or maybe living for the kids? Is there a difference, or do you just feel like it should be treated the same way? It should be treated the same way. It should be treated the same way. Not to stay through stuff Not, not to stay, because the very kids, there you are, you left the nest. 
<laughs> so would I have been stuck here for all these years for you who will leave me at the end of the day? So the situation has to be treated the mm. same. I cannot beg a zella for the sake of the kids. Mm. I need to beg a zella for myself if I want to beg a zella. Okay. That's a good one. So if a person says, he comes back and say, I, please forgive me. Forgiveness is a conscious decision that I am making to forgive you. It should be a personal thing. It is a personal thing and it's a conscious decision that I'm making. No one forcing it down my throat mm. to forgive Kevin mm. Bully. It has to be a conscious decision mm. that you're making. And if it's a conscious decision, you would say, I forgive you because I love you. You see, it's about me. Mm. I forgive you because I can see what drove you to whatever okay and you acknowledge that we'll go for counseling and whatever so if you are willing to move away from that situation and say i forgive you it has to go on a clean page okay. <laughs> <laughs> i didn't expect i thought you're gonna be yeah on my team you know no. yeah, ah, it must cut it must no cut. you can't you, you can't, can't. You i'm can't. not considering nothing you're better no, <laughs> but no, yeah. I'm saying forgive. Yeah, I'm saying I'm saying forgive, but you need to know what you are forgiving. Mm. And a person that needs forgiveness must acknowledge they are wrong. Mm. They have to acknowledge they are wrong because if you if a person says yeah, all right, you 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 yeah, you found me. Mm. I was with yeah in Buddhist bedroom, and you are at fault. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> so you, you forgive a person or you give who's genuinely, genuinely mm. you know, uh, who would ask for forgiveness, mm. you know, who understands why is it wrong, why is it painful, why does he need a change, mm. you know. So you cannot say, I'm throwing an umbrella um, a, 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 or a cover, you know, that everybody must forgive. Mm. Situations are different. Mm. Situations are different. That's why it is important for you to really be in each other's life. Mm. But if there are no go zones in your relationship, so you're talking about then, even when it comes financially, we are here. Yes. You don't, know where about you, don't know. you don't know. Whereabouts you don't know. M7 Benzin, you don't know. You know, it, it is, uh, where he comes from, his family, you don't know. Mm. You know? Mm. Um, then you are leaving a big room for disappointment. Mm. So you cannot say, one strike, I'm gone. Mm. You know? So it's important to know that what are the things that um, I am, as a wife, willing to support. Mm. What are those things? And what are the doors that I will not allow in my house mm. um, to be left open? Mm. Okay? Mm. And little things like, um, you, what are those creepy crawlies that you have seen but you don't want to ask, you are waiting for him to tell you. Mm. Guess what? You will never, mm. it's very few men will just come and tell you a, a story. Mm. We tell stories, but men don't tell stories. That's true. You know, so it's important for you to, I, I always say I'm nosy. There is nothing that my husband does, daddy does, that I don't know. You know? Mm. And it helped. It helped our relationship because first month I knew how much she was earning and we came together, we drew our budget together from I got married the 15th, the 25th, both of us knew originally we were getting pay slips of what mm. we were getting, mm. what we were bringing, mm. both of us in the house. Mm. So there was no loophole, mm. there was no Emilia K, Emilia me, whatever, mm. anything that affected both of us. Mm. It was not his, it was not mine, it was ours. Alright, so thanks mama for chatting to us. Totally changed 
shifted my perspective because I was like, no, no, red card chief. Yellow <laughs> card, yellow card, red card, we're out. But I guess it's different when you're married. And it's a it's a healthy perspective because it focuses on if you want to. You don't have to it's not saying that you don't listen to, to other people, but you don't also have to be stuck by what you hear when there's marriage counseling Begezela and you're the only person mm. trying to make something work. It, then if you realize that you are in a situation where you've been alone, you've been fighting, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. then maybe then it's time to, to really think about it. But I mean, if it's, if it's a once-off thing and the apology is genuine mm-hmm. and you're not being taken for a joyride, but someone is really, really honest and saying, hey, look, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Acknowledging they are wrong. And yes, and mm-hmm. saying, this is what I did. And, mm-hmm. and spelling it out for you and laying it on the table, then that's a space, that's true repentance, I think. Mm-hmm. And that shows the heart of a person. But if it's, it's other ways where they're being toxic and saying it's because you made me do it, then yeah, it's, it's something else. Then bye bye. If you do have any comments, don't forget you're welcome to comment down below. The comment section is definitely open. And yeah, that was that was. I learned a thing or two going to ponder on some things, and I hope that you guys did. And I'm hoping that it won't be her last time. <laughs> Because we worked to get here. We worked to get here. Did you notice that we're matching? Mm, okay. <laughs> Let's not even know. <laughs> Just say. Anyway, um, thanks, Mom, for coming. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think, especially those who know, you know that they're going to learn a lot from watching this particular video. So, yeah, until next time, until the next uh, Wife Talks, see you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>